I don't know who to go hang out with. Robert, Matt, Craig, Joseph. Matt was cool. Robert was cool. Craig was cool. Robert was strange. Hugo's okay. But we've just been to these last two, last two episodes, so... Uh... Yeah, I'm just the same Matt. I feel like I should be focusing on one person and just getting all the hearts. Can't do anything with them. Yeah, let's go to a coffee shop. Amanda. Amanda sticks her head out of her room. Father. When I go to the coffee spoon. Oh, so you get called cool once, and now you're the cool dad who hangs out at coffee shops and listens to me or jazz and stuff. Amanda, are you gonna bring your laptop and your leather brown journal so you can work on your poetry anthology? <laughs> Look, honey, do you, this straight away, the sneering. Look, honey, do you want me to buy you coffee or not? Ellipses. Let me grab my laptop and leather band journal. Hey, it's that guy. Sir, you're still wearing the same shirt. Amanda and I make the short walk over to the coffee spoon. The place is quiet today, just a few people hanging out and reading books in the cozy little nooks. I walk up to the counter and see a familiar pierced face. It's not that pierced. Hey, you were the dude I yelled at a bunch the other night. Amanda casts a sideways glance at me. He tried to sell me shirts. And you might be, miss... Who might you be, miss? This is my daughter, Amanda. The person I am a father to and am very protective of. An honor to make your acquaintance. My name is Pablo. Did I mention that I make witch house music? What? <laughs> I wouldn't call witch house music, but okay. Pissing blow to my ego, though not one that will dissuade my need to impress you. My innate dad senses tingle. I am overwhelmed with a fatherly protective energy. I must do something to protect my child. Reappropriate lines from Taken. Change the subject. Defend which house. Now, I think the right answer is change the subject. So that, you know, this guy doesn't try and bone my underage daughter. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I want to hear the Taken. <clears throat> Type pretty fast for people my age. If you so much as harm a hair on my daughter's head, I'll be coming for you at a comfortable 80 words per minute after I practice a little. Dad. Captain. Comes out for washing dishes in the back room to meet Amanda and I. He and I high five as fellow cool people do. This evening, my new newest employee at your service, although I'm only here until Vacant Vale <laughs> starts their world tour. <coughs> When's that? Well, we have to put out a record first. Alright, Pablo. Now, what do we do with customers again? Not try and sleep with underage girls. <laughs> right. Hello, clears his throat. Hello, good folk of Maple Bay. Can I interest you in a tasty caffeinated beverage? A smashing pumpkin spice latte, please. Ha, ah, I get it. A classic. And you? Americano football, decaf for cutie, Father John Misto. I get this one, but I don't like the band, so shoot me. I maybe get this one? Lost. Lost. I'm going for America. Americano football, please. <clears throat> oh, coffee is as strong as that band's feelings. Good choice. Oh, no, I don't get it. It's a band. I don't get it. Me neither. Oh, uh, American football is a sport, but it's also this emo band. 
that made a good album, then waited over a decade, then made another good album, and the music was very sad, and sometimes featured sad trumpets. I'm over explaining the joke again. Coming right up. Paolo gets to work making our drinks while Matt observes him. He'll get the hang of it for as goofy of a dude as he is, kid works hard. Can you make him wear a shirt that's not covered in his own puke? That would be great. Hey man, that concert was fun, we should hang out again. Hell yeah! I'm actually gonna be done training Pablo in a couple hours and was gonna go record shopping. Wanna come along? Yes! <laughs> Amanda buries herself in her laptop and her poetry anthology. I spend my time sipping my drink and cracking jokes. Last time we hung out, he told me that he had trouble hanging out with other people, but for some reason he and I can talk and joke like old buds. It's weird. I feel really comfortable. Once Matt feels comfortable leaving Pablo on his own, I say goodbye to Amanda and we start walking to the record store. Oh, Pablo's gonna hit on my underage daughter again. Have you ever been here before? Am, am I okay leaving my daughter with your friend? <clears throat> no, I mean we have a record player sitting in the living room, but all I have are two cop copies of Frampton Comes Alive. <laughs> oh, this should be fun then. We're gonna find you some good stuff. Fucking Frampton comes alive. Sad swears. Steady bow. Fake beard arms race. <laughs> Dover ghost. Couples therapy. Yacht club miracle. The, wa the walls of the store are packed with posters, I notice. Artwork, stickers, and records. Few people mill around flipping through milk crates of albums. Some indie band is playing through the speakers. It's a nice vibe. So, you got carcass? Why do people still buy records? Seriously, man. Don't sleep on surgical steel. There's a lot of people who will try to tell you that vinyl sounds warmer or more true to the artist. But I really think it's just nice. It is nice. You get this massive, like, square picture of really sick album artwork. That's why I collect Maiden. I used to collect Maiden vinyls and ACDC vinyls. I used to have a big vinyl of uh, Van Halen's 1984, which is probably worth a lot of money now that Eddie's dead. And I'll be seeing that again. You'd be amazed how many of my favorite albums involve angels smoking. Van Halen's 1984 and Heaven and Hell's self-titled. Why is it always angels smoking? I know Van Halen's is a cherub. Uh, <laughs> but still... It's cool that in this day and age we have just about every song ever created available instantaneously on phones, but there's something about holding an album. Yeah, like I was saying, that's why, and the artwork. Which has made records I love in physical form as possible. Remember when we were kids and would have to wait for the radio? With a... <laughs> no, I'm not that old. I had CDs, dude. <laughs> Immediately you should listen really special. Mixtapes were cooler because of how much work they took. Now you just make a playlist. I think the last time someone gave me a real mixtape was in high school. Future Wave Jungle, Anarcho-Punk, Nunsploitation. Man. Noticing a heavy lack of metal over here, or any grindcore or Future Wave, man. <laughs> like, <clears throat> if you were a milkshake, what flavor would you be? What the fuck? Purple. <laughs> Vanilla. I like banana. That's sick. If you could only buy one type of candle scent for the rest of your life, what would it be? Camouflage summer breeze. Power violence, cherry blossom. Spring Creek flyable. What's your favorite ambient sound? Rain, bowling alleys, howls of the bone chorus. Star Trek Bridge, what the fuck? Starting a new life in the Baltics. Living off the fat of the land in Ibiza. Haha, <laughs> I get it. Fat of the land, prodigy, Ibiza, dance and techno. Maybe I'm missing the point. Sorry, an active volcano. Was it Deepest Darkosphere? 
Well, if nobody exists but me and I fabricated this universe, that's pretty what the fuck. <laughs> I worry that people are nice to me only because they want something relatable, like every person here. Uh, I fear that I don't deserve happiness. I won't ever get it. Saying you too when the waiter tells you to enjoy your food. I like this one. This is like existential dread. Hmm. Oh, I know, just the thing. If you give me Coldplay, I'm gonna punch you in the fucking face, man. Hand me Coldplay. Who the fuck's the national? It's trouble. This is trouble. You'll find me by the national. The National have heard their sad guy sound on album after album, and by this point, they're all pros about feeling blue. This music is so amazing that it'll actually cheer you up. Seriously, what the fuck is with all this indie shit? Where's the carcass? <laughs> Wake up and smell the carcass. Oh, I just want an immolation record. Man, I bring our records to the cash register. A young girl with a septum ring and a buzz cut stands behind the counter with one earbud in. I'm just gonna yell in her face, Got any Carpathian forest? <laughs> <laughs> just on the live pickups. Free albums. Swear I'm good at this by Diet Sig. Forever by Mystery Skulls. And Greatest Hits by Remo Drive. Tight. I don't know any of these bands. Hey guys, do you listen to Shoegaze? <laughs> what about Keen, am I right? No, cause... Yeah, the cashier <laughs> rings Matt up and hangs at back his album. She stares at me, suspicious. Who's the nerd? Fuck you. That nerd is my buddy, Captain Swagwash. This beacon of human charm is Molly. Good for you. Does that signify your reins? <laughs> Is the open mic night still on? You know it. Oh, the third wave's going to do a special acoustic performance. I might see if I can get a few of the girls together. There's an open mic night? Yeah, dude. We do it every month at the Coffee Spoon. Some amazing talent always comes through. Got a flyer for it right here. You and Amanda should come by that night. Matt blushes for some reason. I mean, if you're not doing anything. I apparently don't have a job, so yeah, I'm probably just sitting at home thinking about... Beans. <laughs> Will Vacant Vale be playing? If only. I finish paying for my record and we head out of the store. Man, what a trip down memory lane. I haven't been in a record shop like that since fans had shark shag carpeting. Oh, I miss, I need a van with a mural on it. Now that you mention it, isn't it strange to think of all those weird little musical memories? How do you mean? I think music is a very time and place sort of thing. No. A song is important to me not only in that I, th I think it sounds good, but where I was. No. Stop it. Oh. But where I was and what I was doing. When was the first time you listened to Iron Maiden? It was when I got a CD of theirs. <laughs> it's music that reminds me of X's. Nah, there isn't any. I'm trying to think now. Nah. Struggling through school. No! Stop it! <laughs> but being so poor, I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. One time this girl broke up with me as I was literally listening to I Don't Love You by My Chemical Romance, and my honest response was like, oh, damn, that was good timing, and then I just got on with my life and was just like, oh, well, I guess I'll just move on then. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I didn't really give a shit. Um... What what other one was it? I remember listening to Moth by Hellfl Hell Yeah for a, quite a while, 
Oh, and Rise Above This by Seaver. I listened to a fuck ton of Seaver to get over one of my, like, more meaningful relationships. That's kind of cringe, I know. And hell yeah. Hey man, post-grunge gets you out of shit. <laughs> like, yeah. All that stuff. Listening to those songs reminds me of those moments in my life. I want to get over saying listen to, listen to Everything Dies by Typo Negative is just that right level of melancholic and over the top that it makes you think, what am I doing? <laughs> Being so depressed about this shit. And like, you know, it really makes you think, Everything Dies. <laughs> yeah, now that I think of it, even the pop concert Amanda made me go take her to is special to me. Even that time I went to the pub and literally watched the Wurzels perform was special to me. That literally happened. I saw Trivium one night and then I saw the Wurzels pretty much a week later. Yeah. <laughs> My first gig was the Chili Peppers. My second gig was Dragon Force. My third gig was Queens of the Stone Age. Like, <laughs> Then it took me a while until I went back because I had shit to do. And then I can't even remember what the next one was, but I listened to so much weird shit. What pop concert did I have to go to? One time we went to a show and people were there and chicks were there and we were forced to go and watch Yumi at Six and holy shit, Yumi at Six are a fucking chick band. <laughs> like, you know, that's just a chick band. They have good songs, but they just write ballads. You know what I mean? It's a fucking chick band. Uh, favorite bands. We would always go to my friend Cynthia Chapman's house beforehand and smoke pot in her basement. Like, we were so slick. <laughs> My parents definitely knew that we were smoking pot. Wait, when was the last time you smoked pot? <laughs> this morning! <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> to be fair, every time I see a guy with dreads, I'm like, oh, that guy probably just smokes pot, and I don't know why. <laughs> like, it just assumed, yeah, that guy smokes. He's, he's got, like, a cool haircut. He's got cool tattoos. I have tattoos, and I've had a wide range of haircuts. None of them cool. And, uh, and designer stubble, and I've never smoked pot. I've never smoked pot, man. <laughs> I've been around loads of people smoking pot, but like a lot of my friends who smoke weed or hang out and smoke weed around me are kind of selfish and greedy and aren't like, hey man, I've been offered coke before. <laughs> I haven't been offered pot. And no, I didn't take the coke. Like, I could deal with coke. I can't deal with fucking, like, Coffee, <laughs> like, I think Coke would kill me. No, you don't call it pot now. Call it weed. <laughs> my friends always used to say that. You know, like, oh my god, it's some weed. <laughs> Fuck. You want to get high and listen to records? Say no to drugs. Yeah, say yeah to drugs. <laughs> Reminds me of a sanity not included sketch <laughs> where they're like, hey, do you want to suck each other's dicks and listen to opera music? And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then he's like, well, you look like a guy who likes opera music and getting your dick sucked. And well, I like getting my dick sucked and listening to opera music, so. <laughs> <laughs> Molly's got it going on. Says to meet you in the alley where all the drugs go. Wow, this alley looks like out like the set of Chucky. Holy fucking shit. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. If it turns out it's the feds, you make a break for it and I'll take the heat. You promise that you'll raise a mandal like she's your own. You realize that we is <laughs> illegalized. I definitely knew that. Who knows what looks in the CD underbelly. This does look like the set of Chucky, to be fair. We could find out ourselves in the room. Just look out for Amanda. I swear. Oh, here's our guy. Coming around the corner. He goes, what? And stuff. Lean figure dressed in black. Uh. <laughs> excuse me, Mr. Drug Man. <laughs> yes. Oh, that 
this awkward. I thought Molly was hooking us up. Who's this little punk? Well, I know who it is. Oh, Damien's gonna be pissed. Who sent you? We're cool, man. We're cool. Says who? For all I know, you could be. We're with the feds. <laughs> We're with the feds. Actually, we just prove you're cool. What? I need to know that you're down. Sight mutually assured destruction. Impress him with your extensive knowledge of current drug lingo. Show him you're not wearing a wire. I'm not taking my shirt off <laughs> in front of this guy I ha whose dad I hang out with's fucking son. Yes. Look, man, we're just trying to drive by drugs from you, and we know you sell drugs. You have dirt on us, we have dirt on you. We're in this together now. It's fine, I get it. Buzzcut Molly said you were coming. Well, then shut the fuck up. <laughs> Stupid stud belt that I totally had in my fucking secondary school. And the chain link wallet that I also totally had. <laughs> I never did the piercings, though. I only got a nose piercing. Those piercings are rad, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let's make a deal. Why are we buying it in a back alley if it's legal? Like in Canada now and like in other countries, you can just go to a shop. One. One what? Yeah. <laughs> he means weed. I would like to get one weed, sir. <laughs> I would like a whole syringe of weed. One shot of weed. <laughs> you know, in Canada, they, they actually sell various like ways to have your weed. And there's like a joke one where you can say one syringe of weed. And it's like a syringe of like liquid marijuana that you can like actually just squirt. It's like not like a proper syringe with a needle on the end. You could just like squirt it out into things. <laughs> so you can be like, I have got a whole needle of weed, <laughs> just to be ridiculous. I want some edibles. <laughs> but I live in China, like the least cool place in the world. <laughs> if China could get away with it, they would reformat their entire country into one giant fucking square, I swear to god. <laughs> Oh my god, look, here, take this and give me $10. Just don't tell my dad. Let's all forget this ever happened. I won't tell your dad if you don't. I will tell your dad because I fucking hate you, Lucian. <laughs> Engineering you getting put up for adoption. So your dad is mine. Lucian hands me a baggie of something and disappears down the alleyway. I open it and take a deep whiff. Smells like genuine drugs. <laughs> that? Tar black Afghan Kush <laughs> that Ozzy Osbourne used to keep in his fucking fridge. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne used to have a nice little cottage in rural England where he used to go meet the vicar of the local township for tea and hang out with to show he was cool, whilst the whole time breaking off tiny, tiny pieces of this massive cake sized slab of like primo afghan kush then he accidentally baked some into a cake one time and forgot which cake he baked it into and gave a vicar kush they gave vicar an edible <laughs> and that vicar was like oh i feel a little strange i'll have to go home i feel a little <laughs> fucking Aussie old one <laughs> Let's head back to my place and listen to opera music. Man, I walk. <laughs> we buy, wait, buy rolling papers and soda. Gonna need some snacks, man. Oh, you have a cool house. I want your house, man. Carmen Seat is having a sleepover tonight, so that gives us all the time we need to do drugs. Yeah, well, I just abandoned Amanda. <laughs> She's probably like fucking that weird guy who's into underage chicks now. I feel really bad for saying that. that <laughs> I hope she's okay. That Pablo's a bit of a weirdo. 
Like, he's cool and everything, but, like, I don't like the idea of her. Because in my mind, Amanda's 12. You know what I mean? I've really fell into the father role. <laughs> Matt pulls out one of the records out of his bag and puts it on. I plop down on a comfy leather couch and look around his place. There are a bunch of band posters and his record collection takes up an entire wall. Whoa. Got any diamond plate? <laughs> I had to think of a stupid band that was a hard pull. Been collecting my whole life, so where's your death angel? It was nice to finally get them all in one place after being on the road for so much of my life. Had to ask my parents to hold on to them for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that works out for everyone. Uh, <laughs> Matt sits down next to me and we lay the, mar the marijuana drugs <laughs> out on the coffee table. Do you want to do the honors? Please, it's your house. If you say so. He's shocked at the drugs. Matt pulls out some rolling papers, sprinkles some of the beatnik tobacco onto a piece, starts rolling it back and forth, and the paper breaks almost immediately, spilling the drugs. I don't know how to do drugs. Like, to be honest, I thought out of all the dads, you would know how to do drugs. I can even see your, like, neck tat here. Kind of looks like one of those auspicious cl clouds that are tra in traditional Asian tattooing. It's pretty cool. Matt tries again and is able to successfully roll a nice looking weed cigarette. He hands me a lighter and the blunt, I think, and I take it. Well, it's 420 blaze it. Rip that gold fairway. Open up the nug. Smoke some of that gateway drug. This 420 no scope hit. <laughs> when I was working at the airport, man, there was this guy and he was always talking about smoking weed. He's like, yeah, I smoke weed every day, man. Smoke weed every day. Yeah. And he used to drive a motorbike. He's pretty cool, but like, he's just like, smoke weed every day. And he wouldn't shut the fuck up about smoking weed every day. Um, he threatened to murder my girlfriend at the time because she was annoying. And I thought it was hilarious. Uh, and we hung out with, like, we kind of sort of hang out with this Jamaican guy who was much older than us. And, like, he was, like, proper Rastafarian, and he smoked weed every day. And he was always like, yeah, smoke weed every day. And he's like, do you want me to get you some weed? <laughs> and he was just like, uh? <laughs> I was like, y you know I just smoke weed because it's my religion, right? And he was like, uh? <laughs> I was just like, do you want him to get you some weed? You're always talking about weed. He's like... Uh, maybe. Let's rip the golf fairway. Let's do that. I light that joint. I inhale deeply like a boss. <laughs> this is not what I remembered. It's been a while though. Maybe pot drugs <laughs> have just gotten more potent since the last time I smoked. I passed the joint to Matt. Should it sting this much or are we smoking something wrong? Size go wide. That's not weed. Oh god. <laughs> Is this math? <laughs> it's not weed. Hey, this weed tastes very different. It tastes like heroin. <laughs> no, it's. Yeah, this is oregano. <laughs> I would explain why it smells like a pizza place. <clears throat> that little punk ripped us off. Now I am telling his fucking dad. No, we can't. You listen to indie music, I gotta get high. <laughs> like... <laughs> Sorry, these... <laughs> these guys don't know what a fucking scale is. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They just wear, you know, unlaced fucking brogues and a fucking suit jacket and call themselves random. Let's face it. Uh, <clears throat> I look around the room again and I see photos of Carmen Cedar. I spot a young woman with a huge smile. Who's that? Oh, that's Rosa. Rosa, Rosa, Rosa. Oh, she died. Sorry to hear that. Amanda lost Alex at a young age too. I can understand how that must have been. Wait, my wife was called Alex. 
<laughs> I don't know. I forgot her name. I'm a bad husband. Shut up. <laughs> I look around again. Spot a framed gig poster hanging on the wall. On it, there's an illustration of Madame Rosa surrounded by flowers. The cursive lettering reads, Stillness in the da Stillness of Dancing. Looks like they played the Sound Garden over a decade ago. Were you two in a band together? Yeah. That was the reason I was touring so much when I was younger. We traveled the whole country in this rinky dink little van. Did it have a mural? <laughs> it was hard to start. But once we started gaining notoriety and seeing how much of a song meant to kids, it was just incredible. Wow, that seems like a life that some people only dream of. It was. It was difficult at the same time. I couldn't have done it without someone by my side. Rosa. And I knew that we couldn't do it forever. Missing your family. Fan. Fan stuff. As long as she became preggers with Carmen Cita, we put down our roots. <laughs> her favorite town to play in. Right here. Since she was a kid, Rosa always had a dream to own a quiet little coffee shop. She... Oh, so sad. Don't be sad. I'm not really sure what to say. I couldn't possibly count the number of times. Why is everyone a single dad and the pin mums tragically died? Is the life expectancy in this world for women quite low or something? Like, it's never explained how or why. They just died when the daughter was young. Maybe there's some sort of murder mystery we need to do. Matt gets up to flip the record. Flip it real good. Notice the piano. Piano. Do you play peony music? Out of practice. I used to jam on the keys back in the day. Oh yeah. Couldn't play a guitar, I see, so chose the piano. <laughs> I fronted the hottest seven-piece ska band that Eagle Rock Bay High School had to offer. You had a ska face. Ska never dies. Except for ska Munist manifesto who broke up after the senior talent show to pursue solo careers. Dude, that's rad. Well, I was in a band too. Give me some two-tone love. Oh man, let's see if I still got it. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Stick to your Scar roots. Fucking Wonderwall. I think I'm doing it, I'm playing Scar. Wait, that was just <laughs> I forgot how to play. Deep Purple is always appreciated nonetheless. Can you top Deep Purple? I don't want to embarrass you by playing something more than dun 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 dun. <laughs> it's been a long time and it reminds me of my wife. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to push it, but then I probably would have unlocked more stuff if I'd pushed it, but like, you know. Be like, come on, man, come on. It like, might remind him of his fucking dead wife. Like, chill out, man. If he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't have to. It's like, hey, man, he'll pick it up when he picks it up. Till it gets late and deciding to go to bed, Matt walks me to my door. Let's never tell anyone about the oregano. Deal, wait, can I tell my doctor I don't know anything about the health effects of smoking oregano? We'll be fine. It's literally a herb. Night. <laughs> I smell night. I walk inside and the house is dark, safe for the sliver of light coming from beneath Amanda's door. If Pablo's in here, I'm going to bring in my gun. I knock lightly on the door and enter Amanda's room. She's sitting at a desk with her camera editing photos. Amanda. She faces me and slumps down defeated. What smells like a pizza parlor? What? Nothing. So, what's up? <laughs> Dad, I'm hungry. Check out that oregano. Wait, no. Hi, hungry. No. I'm Dad. <laughs> I killed 
the Dark Souls logo just comes up. <laughs> Amanda died. <laughs> I promised myself I'd never let it come to this. Sorry, kiddo, you set it up. I spike it down. You're a monster. <laughs> want some? Want some scary? Yes, please. Oh, pasta is good, but I'm more of a fusilli person. <laughs> fusilli. Well, I boil pasta and heat up sauce while Amanda watches. Despite my messed efforts, I'm not able to set it on fire. How was record collecting? This was great. Did you know that Matt used to play in a band? No way. Was he good? I don't know if the band was good, but he played some piano for me tonight, and twas amazing. <laughs> He played piano for you, dude. Yeah, he didn't actually. It reminds him of his dead wife. I brought it out, so he played it for my night that's happening in his coffee shop. But he got kind of weird about it. I saw a fly, we should go. Not too late to start a father daughter punk band and play a couple of tunes. Yeah, let me break out my glockenspiel. I think I know hot cross buns, but we can work off of the chord progression. Start the goth punk band of the future. <clears throat> True life, I'm a house hunter. How nice to know she goes back to her room to do photo stuff. Like a nerd. They're staging an intervention for the house hunter who is crying uncontrollably over the color of the walls. They know they can paint the walls of their house any color they want, right? That song stuck in my head all night. Smoke on the water. He's always got his glasses on, except in this picture, and in the dream 520. Grinch Scar Oregano 520. Yeah. Well, it's been a long day. I'm about ready to pack it in after a few bites of ice cream. Ooh, I have ice cream. Hmm. I try to turn off all the lights. Don't turn off the light. Oh, I broke my pants. God, all my pants are breaking. <laughs> I wonder if Manda's still awake. That kid needs some slap. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound. Is it a bat? Is it Batman? Is she weeping? I knock gently on the parlor door, and then I whisper, never more. Hey, Manda, the crying stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. She snuffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. I can see Amanda crying. Why you cry? Why do you cry, child? But y y are you pregnant? Is it Pablo? Can I kill him? Something happened. No! Nothing happened! Go away! Are you... Something must... Amanda, get out! Okay, okay, jeez. Hear her crying again. Wow. <laughs> what was her... What has her so upset? She seemed fine. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. <clears throat> oh, I hope she's okay. Roll out of bed and make some coffee. Man, I should be up for school. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about what's bothering her. About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. Drops a frozen waffle and just slams the freezer door. She wouldn't look at me, yikes. Uh, <laughs> anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Need a ride to school? No. And some coffee. Still freezer burned. I have to go. Why are you sad? We were talking about going to the open mic night. Oh. 
I've never seen an ant like she's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully, this blows over. Oh. Sit back and look at the picture of Amanda and I teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and fear. I remember how determined she was, and now she's dead. Every time she would fall up and scrape her knees, she would get up and try again, and then her knees fell off. I had to stop her because she was bleeding, then she wanted to cry because she didn't think she needed bandage and wanted to keep trying. <laughs> Instead of heading for the kitchen, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Kill me for a sec. Don't kill me. There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I want to say sorry. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong. I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... Are you pregnant? So just whatever it is, <laughs> you don't have to tell me. Where it is, you know, dad, a caller who wants you to be happy. Yeah. Honey, you know I'm bad with words. <laughs> so I was hoping I could speak a language both understand. I made a cake. Ta-da. Dad. I hate cakes. Sorry you're sad, but I support you, cake. <clears throat> It took me a really long time because I ran out of frosting somewhere around sad and had to start all over and this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gave me a big old hug. I grabbed some plates and forks and serve up some cake. So I'm pregnant. What is? The whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Not Emma P. The one who puked in Dead Goth and Beyond. The best friend. The other one. I guess you are <laughs> technically wrong. It's good to have fallbacks. <laughs> Ever since she got the exception, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know. It's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma Puh. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out Rosie M. That both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's. On the same night, they all told me they were busy studying for the Cal KB final. Yikes. Yeah, people suck, man. Oh, another post for is, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Who the fuck's Noah? Did we meet Noah? You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Who the fuck's Noah? <laughs> this is not Hugo's kid, right? The only person I talk about that crush with Emma and she promised not to tell me. I didn't confront the man about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just keep quiet and keep going about my business. Amanda sighs. And one day I invite everybody out to get nachos in the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them even put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy like simultaneously. So I tell them, no, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really, really wanted nachos. Yeah, I like nachos. So I get to the mall, <laughs> go to the food court, and who do I see but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, Noah, all hanging out and eating nachos without me. The fuck. Yeah, fuck these people. Kill them and start again. <laughs> Gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of fucking weird, right? And then they fucking kiss. No. Yes, I know. So I still over there and I'm like, hey, fuck you, man. Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does and Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the, why would you even? Did she poop the bed too? 
gossipy one. I know! This is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything. I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but it, it gets the point across. Let's be fair. <laughs> I was very angry and embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos. Which only further contributed to the shit day. Immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking why they'd been so weird. I wrote another one to Emma asking how long the Noah thing's been going on. And sorry, I know that's a lot. And you're still following. I'm a little confused. I have no idea what's happening. What did MR say? Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Pulls out a phone and reads word for word an arduously long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I don't understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I am trying to be supportive. They were doing a secret for months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, well, then just, oh, she's one of those bitches. If you don't like it, you can just leave, or you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, gonna die alone then, aren't you, you fucking bitch? <laughs> so, okay. Left me on red. She ghosted you. Nah, nah, bitch. Nah, bitch. Block that slot. Saw my message and didn't reply, and I know because there are read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just gonna nod, smile, and wave. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma Puh about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am about. And then I know, I know, it takes me. It's like, how could you say that about me? I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to get kicked out of. Right, I think you lost me the screenshots, but that sounds fucking bad. So, yeah, teenagers are like the fucking worst. <laughs> I used to just show up at parties that I wasn't invited to with a bottle of tequila and just show up like, sup. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, why are you here? And it's like, because it's a fucking free country and just sit in their fucking garden <laughs> and just drink. And like, <laughs> like, with my middle fingers up, like, what are you going to fucking do? <laughs> bitch <laughs> like <clears throat> yeah. or just go to the pub and go oh you're here too how fucking convenient and then just hang out with everybody anyway because <laughs> everyone would tell me because <laughs> like you know I have real friends <laughs> and then there's like the shit spineless fuck boys that used to not fucking invite me to shit <laughs> like good work dip dickhead Half my grade hates me and now I have no friends. Amanda, kill them all. <clears throat> I almost expected it from everybody else, but Emma R's been there since my mama died. Can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. So stab her in the front. <laughs> I'm not even that mad. I'm just upset that she lied. Yeah, people lying sucks. That should you should just practice your stab, and we'll we'll go stab Emma, both Emmas. I kind of imagine she didn't know. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like I miss them, Dad. This does suck. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for hot goss. Wow, wow, wee, wow. It's dumb. It's kind of dumb. It's not dumb. Your feelings are real. Don't be mad. These people suck. <laughs> I guess. And you know where they'll all be in a few years? Working at B&Q. <laughs> because that's what happened to all of my friends. All they're living off of them, their parents, their rich parents' money, being fucking failures, so... <laughs> you know? And calling themselves tragic. I haven't had a job since college. 
Unless you've been secretly being a robot. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck. Yeah, true. I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of wisdom. Real friends don't do that. High school sucks. All of these are true. Nothing lasts forever. Everything turns to dust. Deal with <laughs> it. Real friends don't do that. When you get older, you start realizing that the sort of people you want to associate with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people? This probably isn't helping. This is more like a lecture. <laughs> um, it takes a lot of hard work to maintain meaningful. It took me a long time to figure out that out myself. I wish I'd learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting effort in, literally, it's not fucking worth it. If it's all about them and their take, 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 they can go fuck themselves. I'm not putting all of the effort in. I'm not doing the heavy lifting. Fucking not gonna take. Leave me on red when I text you, then expect a message in like five minutes when I, when you never answer mine to start with. It's like go fuck yourself. Text me just when you need shit. <laughs> Lucky I haven't blocked and deleted you. <laughs> like you know what I mean. <laughs> Some people, man. Some of them you end up working with. <laughs> not beholden to being that friend. You're really not. <laughs> That's something I learned in life. Holy shit. Some people think that you have to... Like, it's somehow your social requirement to put up with their dog shit. And you're just out there like... Oh no, the social rules state that I can be a irretrievable fuck sandwich and you have to just put up with it. And you're like, oh, where does society, societal law written that I have to do that? Oh, it's not. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, I don't need to be here, man. <laughs> like, <clears throat> it will be for the, the guys that are my friends. If you're not my friend, I don't bother fucking keeping you updated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I feel so mean now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's true. They can't see that you're, like, great. It's not... That's their problem. They can go fuck themselves. Keep it in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? We ate the whole cake. Good cake. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Ja? Danke schön. Du bist, du bist immer willkommen. Liebe dich. <laughs> ich liebe so dich. <laughs> Welcome. You've got dads. I've got dads. Wah! Oh no. Oh, I do like poker. <laughs> Dad joke. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> Good talk. Wait, I actually like poker. I just saw the joker and I had to take the shot. Please, Matt. Please, Matt, I'm a dad. I'm obligated. No, 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 I get it. Anyway, we <laughs> I have to say it. I have to. It's law. Anyway, we've been playing weekly poker that we weren't telling you about because you're not cool enough, so I thought I'd send you an invite now. Sounds great. Lose that money. Oh no, I'm overrunning again because I was getting pissed off about fake motherfuckers who now don't have a sustainable income and I laugh at secretly. <laughs> we have We have one friend in our friendship group who we make a joke about how he just bumbles his way into everything and he bumbled his way into a shit marriage <laughs> and he bumbled his way into fucking everything and he won't stand up for himself and I'm just like, ah, <laughs> but let's not dunk on one person. Hey, to be fair, that guy's also a huge racist, so <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. Shouldn't marry or have children with non-whites, he says. 
all right, <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna do that, so, <laughs> um, good talk. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's go to the poker night. It's at Joseph's. I put on my walk-in coat. Across the way, I spot the master walking over from his house. He's got a case of beer. I should have brought beer. Hey, man. I should have brought some tequila. No worries, man. Just bring a full wallow. How long have you guys been at this? Years. Never really high stakes. Craig, you didn't tell me about this. Fuck off, Brian. <laughs> I'm so mean to Brian. He won up me once and I've never forgiven him. I might be the pettiest man in this game. <laughs> Uh, speaking of people, yeah, you give them one chance, you know, one extra chance where you consciously sit down and think, that is your chance. Like, you know, like you're always giving people extra chances because you let shit slide naturally. Like you're like, oh yeah, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, they probably didn't mean that. Da, da, da. And then you think, no, no, that guy did that deliberately because he's a cunt. That's his chance. If he does that shit again, and normally within the next week they do it again and you go, and there it is, go fuck yourself. <laughs> that's that's my that's my system. Sometimes with chicks I like, I give them like a free strike system and I think, nah, she's an irretrievable bitch. <laughs> like, you know, but like uh, you know. I remember that was at one time in one of my relationships where I was like, if she says something about my weight one more time. And the next thing she said to me was about my weight. And I was like, okay, that's it. I'm fucking done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everything. And I was like trying to share good news about some sort of like academic thing or like work thing. It's like, oh, great news. Yeah, this thing happened. And she's like, what? You lost some fucking weight, you fat piece of shit. And I was like, okay, this relationship's over. Blocked. <laughs> like <laughs> straight up. Like, no, fuck you. I'm not fat. <laughs> like. You don't get to talk to me like that, you piece of shit. <laughs> like, oh man. Have your own system, though, to deal with people. Glad you could make it. I'm psyched to take all of Brian's money, just like old times. Craig's a shark. He's a street shark. We prefer the term person who's good at poker. I'm well aware... Craig's always suspiciously good, because he's cheating. Are you still as terrible as you were in college? Poker face. Hey, I wasn't terrible. I'm not bad. I'm definitely good at poker. <laughs> Maybe that was... Oh, shut up, Brian. <laughs> okay, I'm bad at poker. There's no way you're as bad as Joseph. Hey, Robert. Let's bring a knife to this. <laughs> Kill Brian. Lucy <laughs> shrugs. This is my tithing and giving back to the community. Hey, you can't be cool with poker. You're religious. Eat all of Brian's snacks. You're on thin ice, Brian. Give me those pigs in blankets. Not Craig. I just eat any granola. Are you two guys dating? You seem to be acting like talking to each other. <laughs> Let's just get the game. Matt's here too. Is everyone here? Is Hugo and Damien here? I feel like we're leaving Hugo and Damien out of this. The first couple rounds go by easy. I'm getting the hang of things. It's obvious that Craig is running the show here. Craig, how do you get so good at this? It's pretty easy, you just start getting a feel for everybody's tail, like Matt will scratch his ear. Hey! <laughs> Brian adjusts his pants when he's trying to lie. Wait a second. I think you just loudly answered all the room when you have a good hand. Yeah, that's me. That's Joseph's tail. Everything, literally everything, this man is an open book. He couldn't lie if he tried. Well, at least I have God on my side. The poker? See, you can't even say that with a straight face. What about Robert? 
He is a dark horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the darkest of horses. I think he'd wipe the floor with us if he actually tried. I'm just here because I enjoy the company. Oh, it pulls out his phone instead of it. Is that a flip phone? Yeah. <laughs> you a drug dealer now? <laughs> yeah, what do you need? Horse speed Tijuana joints? <laughs> I can get you the street stuff easy. Read the room, Robert! <laughs> Maybe it's 72 hours and a favor call. Maybe I won't need you today. Maybe I won't need you tomorrow or Sunday. I don't really. I'm good. Right. But still, if you got the coin, I got the goods. We should have come to you for the weed, man. I dropped my phone in the toilet. This is backup until I can get it replaced on the warranty. I have never dropped my phone in the toilet. I have thrown my phone down the stairs. And I have lost my phone as it came flying out of my pocket whilst driving a motorbike, so... <laughs> Why didn't you go back and get it, someone said, because it was, like, night, and it came out of my pocket, jeans pocket, when I was doing about 50 miles an hour, so you can, I'm just going to go ahead and guess that's done, <laughs> like, you know, it's gone, like, that's dead, that's a dead phone. If it's not, someone's willing to have it, I, you know, they have, like, smartphones have a thing now where you just, like, block it from your Google account after it's like been lost, so it's basically useless. You can't use your Google Play Store or any of your shit, so it's fine. Pigs in the blankets. Pigs in the blankets. They're good. Might be cheese. I didn't, I don't know if I got enough to raise you on this round. You can always bet your firstborn. You think you can handle another one? Briar and Hazel are a handful. Do you think three kids? <laughs> Try four. Why do you have so many kids, man? Actually, it's technically five. Oh, I thought you were going to say your wife was a handful because she's a pain in the ass. I actually was wondering when we saw. Every time I think of Joseph, I think, ooh, gossip with his weird wife. <laughs> We ended up getting it for her for her birthday, but she's so grossed out by fake baby poop. Yeah, why do they make these? So now I'm changing the real baby and the fake baby. There's just a lot of poop. Daisy got one of those a while back. One night I walk in on her after she tried to take the doll apart to see how the poop mechanism worked, but then she couldn't put it back together and started crying poop everywhere. Fake poop, but still poop. That reminds me of, wait, do we all have a poop doll stories? Everyone nods in agreement. We don't need any more poop in my life <laughs> than there is already. Can we just get back to poker and not talk about poop? We quickly forget about the poop. We run out of pigs in blankets, so we switch over to Craig's healthy snack food. It actually isn't terrible. Kale chips are phenomenal. We should sell these at the coffee shop. It's my own recipe. I'd happy to give it to you guys. I can see it now. Piss the kale chips. I get it. Piss the Bell is a popular post-hardcore screamo band out of San Diego. I don't listen to them, but I've heard of them. You look at Matt. It's, uh, maybe not any of your wheelhouses. It's mine. So how's the shop? <laughs> Busy. Time with the idea of hiring on another person. I found a good candidate. Hmm. If Amanda's looking for a summer gig, let me know. That's really nice of you, but I think she's been burned too badly by coffee shops before. Literally, not figuratively. Matt cocks his head to one side. I'll ask her, though. I don't know what I do for a job. <sighs> Maybe I could work there. We get down to the final hand. It's Craig in the lead by a landslide. Joseph has long since lost all of his chips and has taken to tidying up, refusing any help from the rest of us. Brian deals us all cards. So what's it going to take for Robert to give a damn on this round? Robert looks up from his half-empty glass of whiskey. Do you want to unleash this beast? 
Well, now I'm curious. I got a long history of being a gambling man, but I only do it if you make it interesting. None of this penny chip shit. <laughs> I got a Lily's 18 year single blend sitting in my closet right now. We're saving it for when River turns 21, but I'm willing to put it up as collateral. Now you're talking my language. <laughs> he throws the keys to his truck on the table. Seen better days, but she could pull, still pull a tree tongue out of the ground. <laughs> And fold. <laughs> Everyone immediately folds. Deal the cards, bry guy. Are you guys sure you wanna? You heard the man. Deal. <laughs> you don't bet that early in poker. You wait until you get cards. This is blackjack, man. What kind of poker are they playing though? <laughs> Brian deals the next round of cards. Craig stares daggers at Robert, who casually sips his whiskey. So I know what you might be thinking. Robert put up his old workhorse up for grabs. His only mode of transportation. At times in his life, his only home. How could he be so sure of his abilities in gambling? I'll tell you right now, Craig. I wasn't always like this. I was a lot like you. Smart. Talented cocksure of my own luck. Great biceps. But it didn't last long. I lost everything in a game of Pai Gao in the back room of a Shenzhen tea house. What was a three day business trip? Everything gone, clothes, money, identification, you name it. I woke up in a ditch near Shashri Park and had to make my life new from there. It took me three years to beg, borrow and steal my way back to America. And in those three years, I saw the greatest depths of human fear, <laughs> love deeper than I ever had. Lost it all many more times over. I see my own death, Craig. I know how I die. It's not like this. I've been to Shenzhen, and someone stole my phone. <laughs> so that that kind of that scams. <laughs> Oh my god, pulling the Shenzhen out from nowhere. It's a rough place, man. I saw some chick, probably a sex worker, just sleeping on a mattress in the street in a dressing gown. And a guy pretending to be a monk and begging for money. Him, if they're really a monk in China, they don't beg for money. <laughs> it's against their religion. They beg for food. They don't beg for money. It's part of the way of Buddhism. I don't know about Tao though. I don't think the Tao Taoist monks go around begging either. Robert produces a deed to his house from his jacket, tosses it on the table. All I have and all I am. Are you prepared to go the distance, fucker? Jesus, you two. Can you just like get a room and just fuck already? I, I mean, I slept with one of these guys already and I kiss the other one, but jeez. <laughs> like, you two. Craig wipes the sweat from his brow. He studies Bobbert's face intently, searching for any kind of tell. Robert just sips his whiskey. I am kind of disturbed. I fold. Everyone erupts. Fine, the whiskey is yours. That's why you don't dance with the devil. <laughs> You're bluffing or did you have the cards? That's for me to take to my grave. <laughs> this guy is metal as fuck. Next week, boys. Next week, boys. You got it. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. I almost had a heart attack. Sure thing. This has been very relaxing, and I sincerely doubt I will wake up in a cold sweat <laughs> thinking about it tonight. Keep working on that poke for Shut up, Brian. Although you make good food, I guess. Cool song if you're thinking about me. Okay. That's pretty funny. Pretty fucking funny. Oh, I'm going to pause it there and see what time it is. We might have another session, but I think it's late. It's late, so no. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, ciao for now. Savvy. Boom.